Welcome back, welcome back. I'm starting a new series and this one is going to be BTEC Level 3 Computing. There will be some crossover with BTEC Level 3 IT because some of the units are similar, but I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. So this is just the introduction as to what I'm going to be doing and what you're going to learn from this course. So again, this is BTEC Level 3 Computing. And what do we have here? We have the specification. So the one that I'm going to put in the description is going to be from October 2024. So if you're watching this after September, October 2024, you might need to go to the website and download the new one. Again, the link will be in the description. Next, we have BTEC being discontinued. So I think BTECs are here to stay for a bit longer as T-levels seem to be in such of a shambles. There has been a lot of talk about T-levels not being fully ready. I might be completely wrong, but I'm going to still create BTEC Level 3 content until the last date that BTEC stuff is no longer needed. I will focus on BTEC Level 3 Computing National Extended Diploma in Computing. There is an IT one as well, but this one is going to be the computing one. And I will do the, um, where is it? The Extended Diploma because that will allow me to do more units. The certificate and the extended certificate are the ones that give you less equivalent A-levels. So the series overview of the plans, I will cover the mandatory units and then I'll cover the other units I find interesting. If I get people telling me I need to do unit five or six, whichever ones you want me to do, then I'll obviously go back and try and do those. As a start, I'm going to try to do the mandatory units first. So here's a breakdown of everything you need to know. You have 1,080 guided learning hours, 1,435 total qualification time TQT. The equivalent of this is three A-levels. There are 13 units in in total, seven of which are mandatory, four are external. Someone might be there thinking seven plus four is not 13. You're 100% correct. Two of the seven units are going to be double units. So I think it's normally 60, 90, and then 120 are going to be the double units. So you're going to have two of these units. So that's why it comes up to seven. And again, the mandatory content is 67% and the external content is 42%. Next, who is this course for? I think this course is going to be for people who want some base computing knowledge. This is going to be good enough to get you into university. Again, you're going to have the equivalent of three A-levels. It's not exactly three A-levels, but in terms of UCAS points, it's going to be the equivalent of A-levels. This is not for IT lovers. IT and computing are different things. I've had to sit and explain the difference between IT and computing to people I've worked with in the past. For example, principals who hire computing teachers or IT teachers don't actually know the difference. Not everyone, obviously don't actually know the difference between IT and computing. I've come up with a mini definition here that people are, who are interested in this subject or this area might find useful. So I got the first one from Google Gemini and it says computing is a study of how computers work and how they can be used to solve problems. That's from Google Gemini. IT is the application of computing technologies to solve business problems. So computing is a foundation and IT is the application of that foundation. That's a pretty good one, I would say, um, from Google Gemini there. But I would like to add my own stuff to it. So I think computing is using theory and practical knowledge to theorize, design, and build the IT systems. So computer scientists, so developers, programmers, so on and so forth, they're the ones that normally sit down and build, so design and build the software that we then use. So IT is normally using ready-built IT systems or software to solve problems. So again, computing comes first, and then on top of computing, we have IT. So computing again is the base, and on top of that, we have IT here. The mandatory units again, this information is going to be on page 14 of the specification. We have unit one, principles of computer science, unit two, fundamentals of computer systems, unit three, planning and management of computing projects. So this might be similar to unit nine from the BTEC level three IT. If it is the same, I'll probably just go back and tweak that playlist and add in the extra bits if I need to, if I have that playlist. Unit four says software design and development project. When it comes to resources, your best resources are going to be the Pearson website, which is the link here. I will put that in the description as well. It's also going to be the specification, which I will put in the description. Again, I'm doing this in uh, sorry November now, 2024. Sorry about the writing. I have a really rubbish tablet. Uh, next, we have the best resources. Again, sample assessment stuff is on the website. I will put these in the description as well. The assignment briefs. The assignment briefs are not accessible by you, the students. However, your teachers should be able to download this and share it with you. I will share this with you if I'm allowed to. I will double check if I'm allowed to do that. And if I'm allowed to download them and put them on my website so you, you guys can have them, I will be doing that. Yeah, again, your best friends are going to be the specification and the assignment briefs. The specification, normally this will cover every single thing that could come up in the entire course. So this ranges from exams to coursework. For coursework, let's do this one first. It's going to highlight every single word, bullet point, uh, important uh, topic you need to learn. 
And for exams, it's going to do more or less the same thing. But again, it's going to give you the topics that are going to come up on the paper, not stuff that you should study for. It's just going to give you every single thing that would come up. Now, typically very detailed, but confusing. I will explain. So the specification is here and I'm going to quickly show you one of the units. So this is unit 19, probably going to be one of my favorite units because it's networking stuff. If I go to the very top of it, unit, unit 19 network, unit 19 computer networking, and it tells you it's a level three unit. It tells you it's internal unit unit it gives you the guided learning hours so it should be roughly 60 hours you don't have to worry about any of this your school should timetable this so it's it, it works out for you well it gives you the unit in introduction stuff here it gives you the learning aims but this is not the interesting stuff the most interesting stuff is a summary of the unit which tells you what you need to do for each assignment brief or each section of the assignment brief which i will come to in a second but the main thing is down here this is the learning aim content but it's broken down in a way that if you don't even have a teacher for the entire year the good thing about the spec it tells you exactly what you need to learn for example network types and models right and under that we have lan we have wan we have san we have intranet extranet internet cloud wide on what it tells you every single thing that you need to know so let's just say for argument's sake you don't have a teacher or you need to learn this stuff what you could really and truly do is get the spec go down to this section here and say all right cool what is uh what is lan or what are network types I and mean, you you can google that go on youtube and you find the answer right then it tells you here what network types is actually talking about so you can say what is a lan you can find a video on youtube you can research it you can read it yourself what is a wide Wireless LAN. Again, same thing, research it. What is a WAN? What is a SAN? Uh, what is an intranet? Explain the intranet. What is an extranet? What is the internet? What is So this document here gives you every single thing you need to learn. It might seem long-winded, but to be fair, you can probably find a video on YouTube or a website that explains this in a single sentence or two. You can probably find a video that's probably going to be no more than two or three minutes. This is what the spec looks like. That's for an assignment. So if I scroll back up, I'm going to try and get to... Let me go back all the way to the top. I'm going to try and get to one of the exam units. So if I scroll down to page, I think it's page 14, it tells me the mandatory ones, but it also tells me the, the internal and external ones. So these ones here, these are the external ones. These are the exams. So if I go to unit one, principles of computer science, I scroll down, uh, let's type principles of computer science, and that's going to be this unit here. Again, tells you the level, internal or external, guided learning hours, gives you the same type Type of thing and again down here it gives you every single thing that you could potentially need to learn for this entire exam so that's why the spec is important let me get back to the content now so after the spec let me just put my pen back on after the spec we have the assignment briefs and these are short descriptive sections it tells you the student what you need to do let me show you an example of this I've got the unit 19 one open here. And if I scroll down, uh, here we go. So let me zoom in as much as I can. This is learning aim A. It normally is broken up into two or three sections, sometimes four. Le learning aim A, and it tells you what you will need to be able to do. And it gives you some context and it gives you this task is what you will have to do. But this is very long winded. Down here is what people are used to. You guys are used to P1 and P2 and M1 and D1 maybe, right? So this is where that stuff comes from. So your teacher copies this from here and then tries to explain it using the tasks that you have to do here. So this is just for task A. And if I scroll down, we have tasks B and C combined down here. But again, same thing. It gives you some detail, gives you a scenario, then it gives you the task. And it tells you exactly what you need to do for each pass merit and distinction criteria. So this is what the assignment brief looks like. You again will not be able to download this by yourself. You can ask your teacher for it. And if I am allowed to put this onto my website, then I will be doing that for each assignment brief I do. Let's get back to this. That was the assignment brief. More content is coming. This was just the introduction. And again, I will be going through the core content first, the mandatory stuff first. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.